of April, but we're looking at a revival. So let's, let's, get, let's get part up about that revival right now. And uh, we're going we're gonna to see what happens, okay? And uh, <clears throat> remember this coming Sunday morning, this coming Sunday morning, Brother Jimmy Dirk from up in Elton, Kentucky, will be ministering for us. Amen. And I believe you really enjoy this. So if you get here, get out here. I believe it, uh, that you'll enjoy it. I know, matter of fact, I don't believe it. I know you will. And uh, so let's, uh, I think Brother Brian and uh, Mr. Cameron, they're going to be coming down with Brother Jimmy. So uh, let's, let's just uh, let's keep that in our mind. And uh, we got a lot of things to look forward to. There's uh, the people that are out at the church right now that are sick. You know, there's people that would, would love to come and uh, physically they're not able to be here. I understand that. I know what it is to go through that. And then there's people that, that could come that just couldn't care less. <laughs> They'd rather be somewhere else. They got their mind cluttered with things that they don't need on their mind. They got the world on their mind. They say, oh yes, but they can preach you the message. They can tell you how you need to live. You got to walk the walk. Right. Just not talk the talk. You got to do it. Right. And that's just, uh, that's for those people that they'll get their minds and uh, get their hearts and minds together. You know, I, uh, here in the last few weeks, I've been been around the hospital. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm not going into that tonight. But in different places, the malls and places that you go into, the world today is changed. Okay, stay with me now. The world today that we're living in is not the world we lived in 20 years ago. Things has changed and, and, and you know, they're not going to, I, they, they listen to me, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to pick somebody to drink and pull a, pull, pull a wet blanket over you. But tonight, let me tell you something. The world that we're going down right now, it's not going to change. We're still going to face the things that, that we face today. We're still going to be facing the things that we face. Ten years from now, it's going to be worse than it is right now. But there is a people, but there is a people, not a great lot of people, not a great amount of people, but there is a few people, Brother Jane, that still understand that God has got a people that He can work through. Amen. There's a, you're not going to find, find it in every street corner that you go out and you walk down. You're not going to find it in every hospital that you go into or every mall that you walk down through the aisle. You're not going to find uh, that, that peculiar bunch of people that God has set aside for His work. Now, how about if you got your Bible tonight, you turn to the book of Titus. I'm not going to read a whole lot. Matter of fact, I'm not going to preach very long tonight. But I want to get this over to you. I want you to understand something that we are as people that are set aside. You hear what I'm talking about? We are a people that are set aside from everything else that goes on in the world. We are set aside from what it is that, that, that the devil would like to pull over us. But you know what? We have a goal. We have a goal tonight. The people that are living for God and understand what God is, we have a goal. We've got something that we're looking forward to, and we're looking forward to, to, to what God has in store for those that what? That love Him. And if you've got your Bible in the, in turn to the book of Titus, in the second chapter, you've probably heard me read this 10,000 times, but I feel like I need to go over it again tonight. It says, For the grace, of, in, the, in the 11th verse, second chapter, 11th verse, it says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Now that, now I can sit right here tonight and could probably preach on that for at least an hour. Yeah. And, and, and now listen to what it said. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. You know what? Today, I don't have to stand up here tonight and I don't have to go over what it is that Christ done on the cross for you. Because y'all have heard me preach this. 
from the time that you first heard me preach, and whenever you hear me quit preaching, I will be preaching the same message. And that's Jesus Christ, the grace of God that brings salvation, has appeared to all men. Amen. Now, he's appeared to all men, but not all men have accepted him as their personal Savior. Not everybody that cries, Lord, the Bible says not everybody that cries, Lord, Lord, is going to enter in. Amen. There's a few people. There's a few people that understand what the grace of God and the salvation that is appeared to all men. We understand what that grace is and what it is that appeared to us. That's why that we can stand and raise our hands Amen. and praise God because we know what it is that he has done for us. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteous, and godly in this present world. Right here. Right where we're standing right now. You know, I, 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 see, I see the world going around us. I see the world, the things that's happening in the world. The things that used to be that people hid, they don't hide no more. They don't hide it no more. They come right out in the open with the things that Satan has, has used in their life, that now they come right out in the open with it. They don't hide in the closet. They come right out and they say, yeah, we have the right to do this. They may have the right as far as we see it as natural. But one day, listen to what I'm fixing today, and, and write it down in this book. One of these days, they're going to stand before Jesus Christ. That's right. There's no way out of this. You may, you may make it on this earth doing whatever you want to and however you want to, but I'll assure you one thing, and you can mark it down. There's a day coming when they'll stand before Christ. Amen. And whenever they do, that's when all of all the things that can come down on one person is going to come down on them at that time. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of a great God. Now listen to this. Of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Did you hear what I just read? Amen. Just did you hear what I just read? I'm going to read it again. <laughs> Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our. Separating the two. The two. Hallelujah. Separating the two. Understand this. You know what? I was talking the other night. I'm Jamie and I was talking. You cannot separate. You cannot deny one without the other. It just won't work. It won't work. Do you say, you say well, Brother Walls, do you believe there's one God? Yes, I believe there's one God. Mm -hmm. yeah. I believe that God lives within Jesus Christ. That's right. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, and these, these three, three are, are one. one. Do you think, then you're going to ask me a question, do you think that when you get to heaven, you're going to see the Father? I don't think so. Nope. Do you think when you get to heaven, that you're going to see God? No. I don't mean to bust your bubble, but you won't see God. No, sir. No, sir. Hallelujah. You'll feel the presence. Hallelujah, I feel the anointing of Holy Ghost. Yes. Hallelujah. You'll feel the presence. That's right. But when you see Jesus Christ, I believe with all my heart that when I stand, I will see Jesus Christ in all his glory. Amen. I believe I will see it. I will feel the presence of God yes. shining forth through Jesus Christ. Yes, I believe that with all my heart. Why not? And that's why, you know what that does? Now, I was talking about a while ago. We as a world today, you go out and you, you, you walk the malls and you see people walking down the malls and they, they got their bridges down where they have to walk and hold their pants up. How many people have seen that? And, and, and then whenever you see them and they've got all different color hair, they've got everything that goes against the nature of God. Whenever that we see all this stuff happening, you know what I was talking about a while ago? God has got a people that is set aside. 
God has got a people that has set aside. Now, do we do, do we do we beat these people down because of the way they are? No, we don't. We pray for these people and we do everything. Now, listen, I'm going to prove it to you just in a minute. We do everything that is within our power to bring those people in to the foundation that God has laid. Where I read from the very beginning, very beginning for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. To all men. Not one or two, but to every one of them. Now listen to this. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify, listen to this, and purify unto himself. And purify unto himself. Why are we out here, Jamie, today? Trying to win another soul. Why are we out here today of all this mass that I've been telling you about? Maybe trying to pull one more out and pull him into the, to the way that he needs to go. If they, we are believers in Christ and people that want to live for God, then I'm telling you what today, Brother Jamie, you know what you're going to be doing? You're going to be trying to pull one more out of the fight. You're going to be trying to pull one more out. And that is a good work. That is a good work. Now listen to this. It says, I'm going to read that again. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify into himself a peculiar people. Purify into himself a peculiar people. You know, I looked up that word peculiar. I thought, you know, I, I think I know what peculiar is. And I looked that word up. You know what it means? It means somebody that is strange and odd. Strange and odd. Whenever we go out into the world today, and I'm not talking about the way you're dressed, I'm not talking the way about how long your hair is, I'm not talking about the right kind of shoes you wear, or all that. I'm talking about somebody that is set up for one thing. Zealous of good works. Zealous of good works. Somebody that will go out, Brother Jamie, and tell that lost sinner, tell that one that is lost, hey, listen, there's a better way. There's a better way. And whenever you begin to do that, you know what they're going to say? Now, that person is very strange. You know what? I guarantee you, if you go into the mall today or go into the hospital and you begin to tell people about Jesus Christ, he just told us, what it is that he was talking about. And about the grace of God. You know what? Somebody's going to pull to one side and say, did you see that strange guy just now? Well, that was odd, wasn't it? That was really odd. Did you see him? He walked up to that brother, or that man, or that woman, and he asked him a very simple question. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you believe in him? You know what? Whenever you begin to do that, you know what happens? Then you're Zagos of good works. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to be called that peculiar family or that peculiar person. Whenever then we call about peculiar people, you know, it's not strange or odd to us to raise our hands and begin to worship God. It's not strange or, or, or odd to, to us whenever somebody gets up and begins to walk the floor and begins to worship God. That's not strange or odd. That's right. To the world, it is. To the world, whenever we do what we do for God, it's strange. It's strange and it's very odd, and they call it peculiar. Very peculiar. Now listen to this. These things speak and exalt, and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise them. Let nobody hate you because of what you do. Don't, 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 whenever you show the love of God, whenever you begin to show the love of God to people, you know what you're going to be? You're going to be strange. You're going to be odd. You're not going to fit in with the rest of the rest of the world. You're going to be set aside. And what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about in the way that you look. I'm talking about in the way that you act. In the way that you show the love of God. You know, so many people think that you've got to have a certain, have to have a certain personality about you in order for you to be a, a somebody that lives for God. But you don't. 
You know, I can live for God with what I've got on right now. Amen. I can live for God whether I've got this on or not. If I show the love of God and tell people the grace of God and what it was that he done for them. You know, the, the Bible tells us that, or the, the, the word of the Lord tells us that hell enlarges itself. Not once in a while. Daily. But daily. Amen. Daily. He said this road that we were, we were driving to get to heaven, he said it's narrow. It's not wide. You can't stray off over here one day and all over here the next day. So many people can try to know people that can quote the word of God to you and, and tell you it in the right way. But they still got something in their life that makes them want to sway from one side of the road to the other side of the road. Amen. And for these kind of people get their mindset that God, I have got to get my mind on you. I have got to work for you. Amen. I've got to be my, that peculiar person. I have got to be zealous of good works whenever they get into that point that they want to do what it is that they need to do for God. You know what God's going to do? God will bless them. They'll come out of the rest of the world and begin to live the way God intended for us to live. I'm not going to go any further tonight, but I want you to think about this tonight. We're living in a time right now like we've never lived before. Amen. Satan is running to and fro. The Bible says he goes to and fro, seeking whom he may <laughs> devour. You know, Bill said the devil is already God. He's not active. He's not going to and fro seeking who he might devour. He, and those that he is seeking is the one that I've been telling you about tonight. Those that are in that small category of people. Mm -hmm. A very small category of people that Satan would like to come in and he's trying every way he can Amen. to pull them down and Amen. to take you out. Amen. If you're a believer in Christ, let me tell you something. You're going to deal with the man called Satan. Amen. You're going to deal with him to hell. You're going to have to deal with him. You know, a lot of times the way that we deal with him, we don't like him. Amen. But you know what that does? That tells us for one thing and one thing for sure. When Satan is an after you, he is not God. He's got to you. Whenever he's trying his very best to try to pull you down, and you know that the grace of God is with you, and you understand the salvation of God and the hope of eternal life, you know what you are? You're the most blessed people that have walked with us. Amen. We are. And then you know what? We have the right at the altar of God yes. where other people do not have. That's right. Where the sinners and the ungodly, they don't have that right, Brother James. But us being the believer in Christ, we have the right to go to that altar and to bring our petitions before yes. God and say, God, here it is. This is what I need from you. Right. And God has to give it to us. Right. I've said this so many times. The real true believers in God live below what it is that God wants them to have. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that we do. And a lot of times I'm not talking about everybody else. I'm talking about myself tonight. There's times that I know I can have more from God. But the reason why I don't have it, I don't accept it. He said it. He told me he gave it to me. And if he gave it to me, then it's mine. Yep. And if I'm not accepting it, it's not doing me no good. I'm getting no benefit from it. But you know what he said? He said, I had the hope of eternal life. That's right. And listen to me tonight. I'm accepting it. Yes. I'm accepting it. Amen. Are you accepting that tonight? Amen. Do you know where the plan of salvation comes Amen. from? Amen. Do you understand the cross? Amen. Do you understand the man named Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. Whenever we get to the place that we know and understand, and understand the plan of salvation, you know what we are? We're the most blessed. We're the most blessed. Amen. I've read the book. I know how it ends. I know where I end up. Amen. All right. I hope y'all got some, something out of this tonight. But God is a good God. Amen. God knows how to work. And God knows how to put everything in place 
whenever we need to put it to bite. All right. Listen, tell, tell people about what's coming up in a revival. Pray for, pray for man. I feel like that God can use those people here right here in this church. Okay? I feel like they could be a very great asset to this church right here. They're going to come in. They may come in in a slow way, not the way that Brother James, we expect the doors to swing open and everybody come running in. They may not come that way, Brother Jamie, but they may come in one and two at a time. What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? He is 99, but that one that is out there. He will leave the 99 and go and find that one. That's right. Amen. And whenever he comes back, what do they do? They rejoice. Because yes. I see yes. so many yes. that have had a category as one that used to be and that close to God. Amen. And somebody's got to go get them. Right. Hallelujah. Let's don't worry about the ones we got. Let's worry about getting that one. <coughs> one by one, and it's not wrong with you, you got a big number. God's going to work. God's working. I believe that with all my heart. You know, I, I'm not even going to go into it. Well. But this last couple of weeks has not been a good week. But you know what? I got to buy God something out of it. Right. Okay. I got something out of it. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. All right. Everybody want to say something?